Hey, what's up, YouTube? Um, I'm gonna do a quick video here today. A little quick tip for you. I'm gonna show you. I don't even need to take my wheel off because I'm not having a problem. I'm gonna do it anyway because I wanna show you guys a cool little trick that a mechanic um, taught me. If you're having this problem, drum brakes on several different GM vehicles, including Cavaliers, uh, Blazers, pretty much anything on the, uh, you know, that type of platform with, uh, you know, drum brakes. Uh, Pontiac Transports, by the way, they're included in this. I had one I used to do it. If I would have known this trick back when I had one, one of those vans like Lumina Chevy vans that look like a dust buster. Yeah, if I would have known this trick back then, I wouldn't have dealt with all those brake problems. The problem is, is these rear drum brakes hang up. A um, couple different reasons why. Um, and I'm going to show you here in a second on the camera of what to look for and what causes that. Uh, the number one thing that uh, causes this is improper adjustment. And when I say hang up, they're real grabby. Like if you hit the brake, uh, you get more stopping, it feels like, from the rear, causing your back wheels to skid, which then throws the ABS haywire. If you have ABS on your vehicle, it goes crazy because the back wheels are skidding up. Um, and it tries to prevent that. Um, what I learned, and I've been asking mechanics and people for probably two and a half years I've been dealing with this problem and I finally officially tested, tested, tested and definitely resolved the issue. So this worked. Um, what you have to do is typical adjustment on rear drum brakes is you want to adjust the shoes using the self adjuster out to the point where it's just barely making contact with the drum so that when you do put the wheel back on and you spin it, the, the wheel will spin freely about almost a turn to a turn and a half. That is a considered a proper adjustment. Problem, these vehicles don't like that type of adjustment. What I learned to do and what fixed my problem was if you get your wheel so that it is adjusted to the point where it's doing like I said, where it has a slight drag, where the wheel doesn't keep spinning, but eventually the shoes are making just enough contact and enough drag that it stops. If you go in there, once you get that, that level of adjustment set on the shoes, and you back that self-adjuster out um, so that the shoes are coming in away from the drum, if you back that adjuster out about three clicks, three turns, um, well, I don't want to say three whole turns, you just want a three click, so it has little teeth. So you want to back it out about three, I even go as an extra one, four, out four teeth. So four little clicks back out. Put the wheel back on, leave it. You will not have any more problems with them hanging up if that's what's causing your issue. So let me get these, this wheel off here and I'll show you in a better observation of what we're talking about here. Got a 19 millimeter, I got an impact here, got it on loosen, got a jack and jack stand, and the wheels are chucked up there. <laughs> Trying to find a good place to put these, I don't have to chase them. I say impact tools are great, guys. Definitely worth the investment to get yourself an air compressor. I have a 30 gallon Craftsman's. It's a, uh, from 1998, I bought it used on Craigslist. Uh, I paid 90 bucks for it off a guy. Had to drive about an hour to get it, but it was well worth it. Uh, it's the vertical style, so it's not the, um, I'm sorry, it's the horizontal style, so it has the long tank that stretches out and has wheels on it with a uh, support on the front. Uh, five and a half non-oiled uh, air compressor. It's from 1998, the guy used the heck out of it. I've had it for about two years. I've used the heck out of it. I've painted entire cars with it. Uh, I've done everything from, you name it. Anything that requires impact, I've used it, and it's great. I've used air sanders on it. Uh, don't go any lower than 30 gallons if you can. Uh, if you're only doing stuff once in a while and you're not painting cars and you're not using air sanders and you just wanna take lug nuts off, a 26 or 25 gallon will do fine, but don't go any lower than that. If you go any lower than that, you're going to completely regret your purchase and it's not going to do the job. So go ahead and take this wheel off and get it out of the road. Now we're going to take the drum off. And as you can see, I don't know how well it's picking up. There is brake dust in there, but not very much. It was before when I used to take this off here, 
this thing used to be loaded with brake pads because they were not adjusted right. But here's what we're going to show you. There's another cause that causes these things to stick and clunk and hang up. One of the more common issues is this backing plate here. Now the shoes here, they rest against the backing plate. And what happens is, is years and years of these shoes coming in and out from stepping on the brake, they wear little grooves in the backing plate where they make contact right there. So there's three points. There's one, two, and then one down there behind there where they make contact and they have little beveled edges that stick out a little further. Um, the correct way to fix it is two things. Uh, replace this backing plate, which is a pain in the derriere, and you have to take the whole axle out as well as, you know, pop the seal and everything else. Second way, and disconnect the brake lines so you can get the little wheel cylinder off. The second way is to, um, I use a grinder and I'll grind them down flat, flat to get the groove out. And then what some people do is they take a welder and they'll put a little spot welds on them to raise them back up to the proper height grind them down again so they're smooth, put a little anti-seize on them, clean everything up, get all this crap off here, maybe take like a wire wheel to all that, clean it up with some brake cleaner, put it all back together, everybody's happy again. Um, so that's what, I didn't go as far as welding, but I did grind them down. Um, I'm sure there's a little bit of a clearance difference, but I'm honestly, I'm going to be up front with you, I'm not worried about it, I haven't had any problems. Um, so I put a little anti-seize on the back of them, Make sure everything's clean. Um, always look inside here, inside the wheel cylinder, and look for any wetness or dampness. Um, that's a sign that your wheel cylinder seal's leaking, and you want to replace that. Um, so, but anyway, the self-adjuster, if you're looking at this head-on like this, if you come way down here, I'm going to try not to make you seasick here. And the self-adjuster is actually right there. This here is the self-adjuster. And it has this little clicky thing. And if you look inside of here, it's hard to see, but there's threads in there. What you want to try to do is you want to try to figure out which way you gotta you gotta spin this thing down or up. This little thing with teeth sticking out. You gotta go up or down depending on. Now I can't remember. I think mine is up, which will make these shoes. They'll make these shoes uh, basically compress in away from the drum. And when that does that, it gets you the proper adjustment that you need to keep these things from hanging up. Um, so I learned that trick. Uh, a mechanic friend of mine, um, one's taking credit for it, the other mechanic that uh, is taking credit for telling that mechanic. So, but anyhow, um, I learned that it has been the best trick I've ever learned with GM brakes. I have not had these back brakes grab, skid, hang up, pop anything or squeal or squeak since I've done that. So remember, you get them adjusted, you get the drum on there, get it so that when you have the wheel on there, you get about about a turn to a turn and a half free before it, you know, with enough drag on these shoes touching against the inside of this drum where it stops itself. Once you've done that, um, you know, you can even just put one lug nut on to hold the wheel on. You don't have to tighten it down, just tighten it down enough to keep the wheel from wobbling. Back that wheel back off, pull that drum back off, come down here and back this uh, in, this adjuster, so that the shoes can press in away from the drum on both sides. Do it about four clicks. So you want to get about, see this little um, self-adjuster here? You want to get about four clicks past this guy right here. This is the lever, this is a little lever here that helps it uh, keep it in stationary place. Four clicks out, or in I should say, Kind of give it a little doom, give it a little uh, little hit, just get them all nice and straight, wiggle the drum back on. Your problem, if that's what's causing it, will be solved. Um, it, it fixed mine, I did it on both sides. I have not had a problem since. So I'm sharing this information because not a single person out there has been able to solve this problem for me. Everybody's like, oh, it's the brand of shoes. Oh, your 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 seal's leaking on your um your seal's leaking on your um axle. No, there's new seals in here. My seals guys, they're not leaking. They're a little wet right there, but that's kind of normal, you know, and they're not like leaking. There's no residue built up anywhere in here to even give me evidence that it's getting onto the shoes. It's dry. It's just a little damper on the seal, but it's not actually splashed up anywhere. Um, that happens, you know, it's an old vehicle. There's probably wear in this. In fact, you can hear it. There's a little bit of movement, which is actually normal. Um, it's got 144,000 miles on it, guys. So these shoes here, I do want to make one second recommendation. Scotty Kilmer, um, which is on YouTube, recommended to me to get the OEM brake shoes, which would be the AC Delco ceramics that came stock on here. 
um, not a bad idea. Um, I do find that some of the newer aftermarket shoes, especially those organic and metallic crap that they sell, I know they're only shoes, I know you don't have to replace them much and they probably will work fine for you, but here's my recommendation and Scotty Kilmer's. They build up a lot of extra dust on those when you don't use ceramics and uh, a quality shoe. Not only that they do that, but what I've also found to be an issue with these is that it also, um, they get a little sticky when they get hot, those organic shoes and those metallic ones. They get a little sticky, and then he starts sticking to the drum, and it'll cause them to hang up. So I listened to his advice. I went and I got some AC Delco shoes and threw them on here and got that and found that other information out about that adjuster, and everything's been great. I haven't had any problems with these back brakes since. Um, and hardly any brake dust at all. I mean, that was about a month and a half ago I adjusted them, and you saw, I don't know if the camera picked it up, that little bit of brake dust. I don't know if you can see that black powder on a stone. That's all it was in there. Before, when I had them adjusted, quote unquote, properly, according to the way you're supposed to adjust from brakes, um, I would get in here and I would have enough brake dust in here that I could build a little nice little dome here, like a little teepee for you on the dirt of brake dust. And that's after just a month. So. They were clearly dragging too much and overheating and causing them to stick. So I'm not going to mess with the adjustment. I've got everything so perfect on here. I even you can see they're shiny. I've even put spring kits on here. All this troubleshooting that I did was all could have saved money if somebody would have just known that you need to actually not adjust these properly. Go figure. Um, you know, problem solved. Uh, the next video I'll probably be doing here, and I'm just saving up some money because I've been spending too much money on this vehicle lately. Um, is I'm going to replace these rear stabilizer uh, or sway bar links on here. These things, as you can see, they're dry rotted, they're shot. Um, I don't appear to have too much movement in them, but and I don't think they're causing any knocking or anything, but I'm still going to go ahead and replace them anyway, um, just so they're done. And then my next plan of attack is, um, yeah, this is going to be a good one. I am putting myself a, um, what do they call it, a thrust, thrush, welded muffler on here. Figure what the hell. You know, I'm always spending money on this thing, replacing and repairing things that I actually need done. Um, I just did a caliper today, but that was like $13 in advance for this caliper. These things are cheap on this car. Um, I'm going to spend some money and actually customize something for a change and do something aftermarket. So I'll definitely um, let you know how that sounds and, you know, put up a video on how that sounds so you can hear it and um, get the thrush welded ones from what I understand. Last thing I did on here was the bodywork here. I replaced this whole section. Uh, somebody had already put a layover uh, quarter on here that went across here that was welded. Um, it the, the layover that was tack welded on here it rotted out and this whole bottom part was all gone. So basically from here all the way up around here was completely gone. It was just completely rusted out. There was no lip. It was rusted all the way up and through here too. So what I did was I uh, got a piece of sheet metal. I think it was 22 gauge up at Lowe's Home Improvement Store. Uh, cut out all this bad crap. Don't have a welder so I went ahead and just riveted them all the way across. As many rivets as I could put in there without being too close to each other and uh, riveted down at the bottom. Bennett even got the nice little shape in it here that matches that shape. I did that using a 2x4. I just took a rubber mallet and bent the shape in there so I have the right angle going with the body line with the door. See that? And uh, it messed up on the lip here, but that's okay. I'm not that concerned about it. There's no lip here and there's supposed to be. This is supposed to carry down here. I think this will actually be better because I think what's going to happen is it won't let all that crap lay in there anymore. So it'll let it just blow out. And uh, I had to fill in, as you probably see the rivets there, I had to go all the way up to here, all the way down this whole section. I put metal in here and then I went over it with door glass to seal it and door glass up through here. And then I also put a hunk of metal in here and made this lip here. I did a little bit of a doodad there, but it's coming through again. But you know what, on a scale of one to worry, I'm not that worried about it. So. I'm going to go ahead and just spray this off while I have it open with some brake cleaner. Put this back together. That's my quick tip. I hope someone out there likes this. I hope someone out there can use this. Um, it has solved the biggest mystery in me. This vehicle was actually unsafe to drive before I did this. If I'd hit the brakes, especially when it was warmed up or wet out, my, rat, my back wheels would lock up and I'd almost run into people. Um, they would lock up for a second and then, they, then I'd get the ABS you know, pulsating through the pedal, which makes it really hard to stop. So. Um, now that I've got this straightened out and I got this front left caliper replaced that I just did today, there's the old caliper there, it was all hanging up, um, I think we got it. I think we're in good shape now. So I will update you. Um, the last video I posted was about the 
uh, knocking noise I'm getting from the torsion bars. Uh, it sounds like it's coming from and from the keys on the cross member. Um, I'll update you on that too. I packed it with some grease today, so hopefully that solves the problem. So I'll let you know how that works out for me once I have a chance to drive a little bit with that grease in there. So hope all is well. Thank you guys for watching. Please always rate, comment, subscribe, and uh, like this video for me. Thank you for watching and uh, enjoy your day, guys. Have a good summer.